Stuka Joe here for turn four of Red Typhoon. And this is the turn where we have to make a decision for the Soviets whether to withdraw the First Shock Army. The First Shock Army is presently uh, in the spearhead for the push against Rzev, which is a three victory point city. And you see it there, and it is part of the WR front. In the WL front sector, the Soviets have already captured Sukinichi, earning or depriving the Germans of a victory point, and uh, they seem poised to push to the uh, northwest in the direction of Spas Demensk, but the uh, 2nd Panzer Army has sent one of their Panzer divisions there, and they will be defending that area with two Panzer Grenadier divisions approaching from the west of Kiro. So far the Germans have lost eight divisions and the Soviets only two. And we begin with the Soviet activation point phase. And here we see that for turn four the Soviets receive seven activation points and the Soviets will be able to activate a partisan unit and may conduct an airdrop with uh, that special airborne unit. So the Soviets get their seven action points. And together with the two they had from the previous turn, they have a total of nine for this turn. Now on to the Soviet movement phase. And here we see the situation in the WL front. Having taken Sukinichi, the Soviets want to push towards Spas Demensk. The Germans have plugged the gaps there. There's still some areas to advance to the west specifically a gap here to the southwest of Kirov, but the Russians don't have enough forces in that locality to exploit that weakness in the German line. So the Soviets spend their first activation point to activate the units of the WL front for movement. And here we see the positions after movement. The Soviets have concentrated much of their forces to the southeast of Kirov and have surrounded the German 216th Infantry Division. There's a good chance of eliminating that unit. Also, the Soviets have come in contact with more units of the German 4th Army in order to uh, preclude that army from counterattacking to the south and retaking Sukinichi. We've seen that the Soviets are stretching thin their line here from uh, the town here of, I believe this is Medin, to Kaluga, in order to uh, allow the other units to attack in force. And finally, uh, units of the WL front have advanced and created this gap with the units uh, of the uh, B front, but the Soviets will most probably as a next uh, activation, activate these units to plug in the gaps there. Soviets now spend their second activation point to activate the units of the B front for movement. In this game, the B front is basically covering the left flank of the WL front, and they will be advancing in order to plug uh, any gaps here between Belev and Sukinichi. So here we see the positions of the B front after movement and we see that they have crossed this river here and taken the city of Metensk which deprives the Germans of two victory points and further to the north they have plugged the gaps in the line from Sukinichi to Belev with uh, these two infantry units. Now we'll move to the sector of the WR front. There's plenty of opportunities here to surround some uh, dangerously exposed German units here. These, uh, this Panzer Division, uh, the 6th Panzer Division near Uvaruka is uh, clearly exposed. We could see Soviet units surrounding that unit as well as the 14th Panzer Grenadier Division. So the Soviets spend their third activation point to activate the WR front for movement. We see this uh, mechanized infantry unit will spend its six movement points 
to reach this position effectively surrounding the 14th Panzer Grenadier Division. And this armored unit will move here. This prevents this Soviet unit from becoming isolated and all three units will join in the attack against the surrounded Panzer Grenadier unit. Meanwhile, these Russian armored units will move in this direction, attaining this position. While the next two armored units fall upon the 6th Panzer Division here. And uh, slight correction, the second unit is not an armored unit, it's an infantry unit, but it joins in with the others. Continuing with the movement of the WR front, now we see the situation to the southeast of Rezev. Here we see an opportunity for units of the WR front to join in with those of the Kalining front in an attack against this exposed group of German infantry divisions right to the east of Rezev. Let's see the movement first of the WR units. Here's the position of the WR units after movement. Clearly they will be holding the line in this sector against these German divisions while they will be attacking in the direction of Rezev with the powerful first shock army and still pending is the elimination of these two German infantry divisions as well as units of the Kalining front falling uh, on the 9th Army's 161st Infantry Division and the unit that is beneath. So now the Soviets will use their fourth activation point to activate the Kalining front for movement. Here we see the units of the Kalining front before movement and uh, it's basically two groups of units one group is geared towards the capture of Rezev, while the other group is holding the line uh, and crossing this river here and pushing the units of the 9th Army, which have been static in their positions, original positions at the beginning of the game. So let's take a look at the movements of the first group of units from the Kalining Front. And here are the positions after movement. Uh, the units here have enough for a two to one attack against those two surrounded German divisions in the woods. And units from the Kalining front have fallen upon these two German units from the north to complete the sealing of those units and uh, allow uh, a concentric attack with units of the WR front. Now let's take a look at the movement of the units of the Kalining front in the sector against the 9th German Army. We see not much movement at all, only uh, this unit moved here in order to uh, reinforce the position of the Soviet forces across the river. The only forces left to move are those of the northern front, so the Soviets spend a fifth action point to activate the units of the northern front for movement. We see some opportunities for destroying several units including this weak German uh, cavalry unit perhaps surrounding this uh, infantry division but of course that would presuppose using an activation point to later activate this same front for attack the Russians have four activation points left. One would be obviously for the WL front, another one for the WR and the Kalining front. So they would have the fourth activation point to activate these same northern front units for attack. So these are the positions before movement. And here are the positions after movement. These units will be attacking the now surrounded German cavalry division. And we will have an attack here against the 32nd Infantry Division, all of the units are holding their positions. So having concluded the movement phase, we move on to the Soviet combat phase. In the B front sector, there's no possible combat, but definitely there are some combat situations in the WL front sector. So the Soviets spend a sixth activation point to activate the WL front for attack. 
So near Kirov, the Soviets have enough force for two two-to-one attacks, one against this infantry division and one against these two German armored divisions which are in forest, or the Germans could use all these units in one four-to-one attack against the German infantry division, and that's the course that they will take. It is a four-to-one attack, but the German infantry division is in forest. So there's a minus one die roll modifier. And the Russians keep these units in one four to one attack against the German infantry division. And that's the course that they will take. It is a four to one attack, but the German infantry division is in forest. So there's a minus one die roll modifier. And the Russians keep rolling low. This time a two modified to a one exchange. And comrade Stalin is not happy. So each side must eliminate one unit. The Germans eliminate their sole defending unit. And the Soviets will eliminate this unit, the weak 2-6 unit. And different from other games, an exchange result like this, where all the defenders are eliminated, does not uh, allow the surviving attackers to advance. So that's the end of that combat situation. And taking another look at the situation, there's another possible attack here which would be these three Soviet units against the 260 infantry division because not all uh, attackers and defenders have uh, a river in between them. There is no minus one for the river. So this would be a two to one attack with no modification. And after the failure of the first attack, this attack will be performed. So it's a two to one attack. We roll 1d6. And another lowly 2, AL, the Soviets must eliminate one of their units. Which one here? Because these two units are breakthrough units. The weaker is this one, but it has breakthrough capability. The stronger one, uh, this four, doesn't. So which one will be eliminated? And uh, there's really not much use for breakthrough units if you can't break through the line. So this weak breakthrough unit will be eliminated. So we've seen the fiasco of the attacks of the WL front during this turn. So let's turn our attention now to the sector of the WR front. So these next attacks are critical. The Soviets have enough force here for a four to one attack against these two uh, surrounded German Panzer divisions. And still with these two units left, they would have Enough strength for a three to one attack against this Panzer Grenadier unit, but with a minus one. If the Soviets dedicate this unit to the attack, it would be a five to one attack, still with a minus one, but that would weaken this principal attack to three to one. So let's see uh, how will the Soviets finally attack. And the Soviets will dedicate the 8-4 unit to the attack on the 14th Panzer Grenadier Division. So this is 18 to 3, 5 to 1, with a minus 1 for the forest. So we roll 1d6, a 6 modified to a 5, defender eliminated. So the 14th Panzer Grenadier Division is eliminated. The Soviets will occupy the hex with the uh, breakthrough armored unit and that unit cannot advance an extra hex because of the zone of control of the surviving German units there. So now we move on to the attack near Uvaruka. We have a three to one attack against the two Panzer Grenadier divisions which are surrounded. And this is a three to one with no modification. So we roll one d6 and the result is another one modified to a zero attacker retreats. So all three stacks of Russian units are retreated one hex and flipped to their disrupted sides. So mixed results for the Soviets in their attacks around Uvaruka. Now moving to the north, to the critical sector around Rizev, we see uh, attacks by the WR front, including the first shock army coming up. And uh, those attacks will be made in conjunction with the Kalinin front. So, this is the end of this video. We will conclude Soviet turn four and the entirety of German turn five in the next video.
So this is Stuka Joe signing off for now. Thanks for watching.